Hello and welcome to Unpreachy, a podcast of homilies and reflections from St. John Chrysostom Parish. Today, Father Ed Hallinan reflects on John chapter 17, verses 11 to 19, the gospel reading for the seventh Sunday of Easter, May 12th, 2024. Welcome, uh, everyone. Oftentimes, as a uh, priest, when you are uh, preparing with a family for a funeral, uh, things come out. And what do I mean by that? Things come out. We might be asking the family representative who's come in to plan the uh, funeral, are there other siblings? And I got my pen and paper to write down the names of the siblings. You know, we haven't seen him in about 30 years. Uh, Where does he live? Oh, Springfield. Oh, uh, okay. But what what often happens uh, at the time of a funeral, and I think because of the emotions of things, that that things unravel uh, a little bit. And I believe that Jesus was dealing with that same type of a thing when he was praying in today's gospel for us, like he was praying for his disciples, but he was also praying for anyone who would believe in his name that they be one. So I tell you that you are holy. And Jesus validates that today in that he raises each and every one of us to the Father in love, that they may be one, his Father, you and I are one. Jesus prays for unity amongst all his creation. Now, what have we done to foster that unity, to try to make that oneness a reality? You know, as a kid, I used to love to look at the globe and, you know, twirl the globe, spin the globe, but to see all the other areas uh, of the world and the capitals of all the different areas uh, in the world. Uh, Sometimes in our room, our classroom would be a humongous map, you know, that we used to pull down and uh, we would go over and look at the map. Now, one of the things that, that hit me is that when God created the world, he didn't draw in lines that separated us from one another. Uh, North America, uh, South America, uh, Asia, uh, Europe, the Philippines, he didn't draw in the lines that separated us from one another. He didn't want that. He wanted us as one. And what has happened is that even in our own lives, we sometimes draw lines that separates us from one another. An example, one of the things that you're very much accustomed to is that parishes have boundaries, you know? And to be honest with you, I don't even know what our boundaries are. Uh, I, I, I never much cared for boundaries. If you're real happy coming here and you're from Media or Swarthmore or Chester or whatever, and you want to come here, come on. If you're from here and your kids play with kids from Notre Dame and you'd like to go to Notre Dame, go where you're happy at. But one of the things that parishes did uh, was uh, was the boundary thing. And so we even got accustomed. I was at a priest council meeting recently, and uh, this maybe a month or two ago, CYO people will get a kick out of this. 
and uh, a pastor shared that he had been in one parish and, and then he got assigned to the one not too far away and he said like he went over to the gym and the kids were saying we want to kill the uh, basketball team from like St. Joe's you know we want to kill them and he goes, I was saying to myself, is this what we're putting into their heads? Like a basketball game, yeah, you want a competitive spirit and stuff like that, but you don't want to kill the other team, you know, type of a thing. But these boundaries uh, that we draw uh, somehow uh, does that uh, to us. I remember being a graduate of Bonner and you know, we were playing O'Hara. Oh my God, the, it, it, it was crazy what was going on. My dad had a business in the boundaries of Cardinal O'Hara, and I knew as many kids from O'Hara as I did from Bonner. But the, the rivalry, it would sometimes like get out of hand. So Jesus is praying for a really good reason. And so what do we, his holy Christians, what do we do about that? Do we just let it go, not gonna get involved? Jesus is asking us to get involved so that we may be one. And I believe what Jesus is asking us to do is start with our families. Foster that unity, that oneness in our families. If you see that there is a need for reconciliation between yourself and other loved ones. Jesus is saying, please take the first step. Please reach out to your brother or sister before you come to the altar with your gifts. Please be reconciled. We can preach that and encourage other people to do that. But sometimes when it's me that's been hurt. I'm not going to make that first step. But yet you encourage other people. We need to take the first step at reconciliation if we want to have the oneness that Jesus is inviting us to. What does Jesus do after he prays for his disciples to God? that he prayed for each and every one of us to God. What did he do next? He sent them out. This message of oneness that I'm giving you, I'm sending you out to make it a reality. This past week, I had a, a funeral for a gentleman, uh, Joe Facenda was his name. And you know, what was my first question? Is he related to John Vicenda? Now, those of you that are young, that's not going to mean anything. But to those of us that are sort of up there a little bit, we were used to him uh, doing the news, uh, you know, when we were growing up. And he had an unbelievable voice. If any of you watch NFL films, he's the voice behind uh, NFL films for many, many uh, years. But uh, Joe Vicenda had been a uh, usher here like years ago when he was raising his kids and everything. And after the mass was over, this couple came up to me and they said, Father, uh, we drove from Virginia uh, just to come to this uh, funeral today. And uh, we're not Catholic. We're uh, Dutch uh, Protestant. But we felt so welcomed here. Uh, when you said folks of uh, different faith, uh, ethnicities at the beginning of mass, you know, welcome to St. John's. Uh, we felt real uh, welcomed here uh, today, his, his Protestants. And then uh, the wife of one of the sons came up and she said, Father, I don't know if you know this, but she goes, I'm, I'm Jewish. And uh, when you said that the first reading from the Book of Wisdom was from the Jewish scriptures, she said, I felt so welcomed here in a Catholic church. And she said, I've never felt welcome going with my husband to church. But when you said Jewish scriptures today and your homily, I really felt welcomed here. At our four o'clock mass, 
We have a, a parishioner who's been really battling uh, illness, and her Jewish neighbor brings her to Mass every Saturday at the four o'clock Mass. And she doesn't just drop her back and come back an hour later. She sits right next to her the whole Mass. And I bet you everybody that's sitting around them probably thinks she's a Catholic. And, uh, but here, the lady's Jewish. Her neighbor is in, ba in a bad way with health, but her neighbor loves to go to church. So she takes her to church. So what I'm trying to say to you, church, is that we need to take the step to try to bring about that unity that Jesus is talking about. And I think if we do that, I think our hearts are full of joy when we push ourselves to do something that maybe we might be a little uncomfortable with and we actually do it. There's a, a sense of joy in our heart that we're doing what the Lord prayed for us to do. So during this week, I ask you just to think, is there anyone in your family, anyone at your place of work, anyone in your neighborhood that you need to be reconciled to? Maybe take the first step and call upon Jesus to assist you in that. God bless you. Unpreachy is a production of St. John Chrysostom Parish in Wallingford, Pennsylvania. Visit us at sjcparish.org. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend. This podcast was produced by Brendan Lorden with music by Skytoes on Upbeat. Thanks for listening. Be well.